All right, the Soccer Tournament 2024 rules, TST. Seven-a-side tournament consisting of 48 teams right. in 12 groups. Two 20-minute halves followed by a target score time. The target okay. score is set by adding one goal to the leading team score at the end of full time. Okay. <laughs> Every five minutes the target is not reached, an outfield player will leave the field and the winners will win a $1 million prize. I hope you got all that, Shaka. Um, most of it. Can we, can we go with most of it? We can go with most of it. Now, we go with most of it. A lot of big names in this tournament. We're seeing Sergio Aguero mm -hmm. in there. We're seeing Pat McAfee, JJ mm -hmm. Watt. How do you think one of the best NFL players did in our football? Um, he, he did slightly worse than I did at basketball. <laughs> Can we, can we go with that? Yeah, we can, and we can actually show you because we do have some of the games that we've seen so far with this tournament. So, here is Burnley FC against Natty FC. That's MLS side FC Cincinnati's contribution to the tournament. Second minute, Aaron Walker would score the first goal of the game. Well, that's a couple of deflections on the way through. Hits the Sioux at the end of that. Fifth minute, Manuel Ledesma. Nice. 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 The defender doesn't do great well. here. Uh, this is a long pass to JJ Watt, who uh, just takes the keeper off. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a play. That's straight out of the playbook. The NFL playbook. Oh, man. Uh oh. I mean, oh, oh, no. This is a mischance. Oh, Come on, take, take somebody else out. I just, I just want to see JJ Watt take people out. And uh, OT, minute five, Jimmy McLaughlin scores the winning goal, a.k.a. target score, now that you've got that, obviously. Oh, so, so Natty won 6-3 and then had... All right, let's okay. go with that. Concafa representing ESPN, I would say, oh, here. Is it? Against the Reggae Rovers. Uh, Pat McAfee, hopefully going to do his proud, Pat. Mm. 19th minute... Siobhan Walsh would score the first goal for the Rovers. That's a nice finish from Walsh. From tight angle. 27th minute. Siobhan Freighter. What, what, what's going on with who? Concafa? Oh, 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 oh OK. <laughs> what, what's going on with our side yeah. here, by the way? Roshan Panton scoring the third for Rovers. All right, here he is. Come back. Come on, Pat, where are you? Mm. Well, we do get one in. Oh, that's a nice strip. That's a nice finish from the goalie. Uh, yeah, Stefan Miatovic. Uh, Long way out. Nice hit. Um, goalie doesn't cover himself in too much glory. Uh, the uh -oh. other keeper, Carlos Ceballos Jr., would win it for the Reggae Rovers. Oh, man. That was. was They're really not looking good our, for, for Concafa. Concafa. Oh, or for Burnley. Uh, Pat, you've got some answers for us here. You're letting ESPN down with all of this. Yeah, I expect them better. Ah, let's have a look at how Wrexham are doing. Obviously, oh. Wrexham. Talk of the football world right now against the Roja Eagles here. 10th minute. Kayantas would score with a pass from Nedzad Pladzi. Nice ball movement, easy finish. And this is clever. Gary Hooper to right in front of the goalie. All he has to do is redirect. Uh, Vendin Sinani. Ah, oh, set him off. Damn. So then it was 4v3. And let me tell you, there's going to end up being a little bit of trash talk after this Kayantas winner. All right, yeah, we, oh, we forgot sorry. the last word there because the Italians will know you're not going to end. All right. All right, Aguero's team against right. Sayward FC. Sergio Aguero to start the game here. Anybody got any idea? <laughs> 17th minute, this is to make it one run. Oh, Aguilar. nice goal, Aguilar. Very nice. A 41st minute, it's going to get heated here. Ooh. Aguero gets into it when he thought that he was fouled, but the referee didn't call it. Uh -oh. It's... I'll be honest, Goon, I didn't think that was a foul. Ah, I didn't think that was, there was much in that. And then also, it's a general rule of thumb, pick on somebody smaller than you, <laughs> Goon. That's kind of my go-to. <laughs> there would be a winner for Say Word FC. It would come from Brendan Lambay. Oh, Goon! That's a chance. That came after Aguero's mischance. Oh.
That's got deflection as well. Oh. All right. Definitely. So, we're welcoming everyone now. Frank and Jules are back, and Alexis is with us from uh, North Carolina. She'll be watching it all. How is it, Alexis? <laughs> well, Kay, all I have to say is this is probably the first time in a long time I think I've come on ESPN FC without any makeup on, but such is the heat. <laughs> and as a Jamaican, you know, I mean that. But look, Honestly, it has been such a good opening day for TST. People have braved the heat since 8.30 a.m. this morning. And I mean, families, kids, everybody. I was starting to wonder if anybody actually does any work here in North Carolina because people have been out here all day. And look, after a long season from the Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga, everything, it just kind of feels nice to enjoy what feels like a festival of the beautiful game. It also feels like a bit of a fashion show as well for football kits. I have seen a ton of different ones. I may come in a shirt tomorrow because now I feel like I need to fit in as such but what kind of surprised me is not so much the many Kun Aguero shirts whether for City or Argentina or the Bayern Munich or Borussia Dortmund shirts but the amount of Wrexham shirts I have seen here <laughs> this is probably the most Wrexham fans I think I've seen ever outside of Wrexham itself so that would probably make uh, I guess we could call them our friends and our colleagues Ryan uh, Reynolds and Rob McElhenney very very proud but overall brilliant day we're absolutely roasting my back is currently frying but there's still plenty of games that will take us well into the night and you know me I, I will have a good time in the middle of this heat we definitely know that about you Alexis uh, Jules we want to know why you aren't playing there because the streets are saying that you were really good in the pickup games in Qatar that's what we've been told why aren't you there I, I, I want to know why I'm not there that's what I want to know what's what happened my agent oh, 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 yeah. was Pat Pat maybe oh. didn't get my number Maybe I was too expensive, maybe, I don't know, but I'm, I want to play, so hopefully next season, next year, I can be part of the ESPN team. I will do better than what I've seen so far on the highlights, that's for sure. Yeah. Ju uh, Jules is a killer than Mbappé of 77. <laughs> Look at He's that. expensive <laughs> and rubs everybody the wrong way. You have to get the Prime Minister involved yeah. if, you, if you want him to play. That's yeah. me. Yeah. yeah, we need Pat McAfee to see that. You need Jules on yeah. your team. Frank, was it the one million dollar prize a little bit Call too low Pat. for you? You Pat, needed it to be me. Pat. Yeah, no, he's, no, he's not. It's not. It's not enough. It's not enough yeah, for me to so. go, go, go there. You know, no, no, no. For for one million, I, I don't move my bed for that. No, no, I'm not interested. No, and what, I'm too old for that. What do we get out of bed for, Frank? <laughs> what would we get out of bed for? Five million, ten million? Uh, I will start to think about it around five million, you know. No, I'm t no. without teasing anything, I think it's a very good idea. It's a very good idea, but uh, I, I have to play a game on Saturday for the uh, 18th um, uh, year of the D-Day uh, as an ambassador of the uh, Bleu et de France. And I tell you, I'm only shaking to know, I'm already shaking to know that I would have to run, maybe being kicked, maybe getting injured, because I'm not ready for that. And I, it's over for me. I'm too old. I'm 56, and there is a time for everything. And uh, Jewel is still young, so he can play. Shaka can be in goal. That's OK. <laughs> but I can't run anymore. I mean, I can't, I can't go for contact or think like that. <laughs> yeah, Shaka, you do another sport, yeah, man, uh, man, so man, you man, can man. still do it. You know? <laughs> full time basketball now, Frank. <laughs> but, I'm a basketballer now. Yeah, exactly. Go. Yeah, we go to <laughs> basketball together. No, I'm too, I'm too old for that. Uh, Alexis, maybe you could wear a reggae rover shirt. Will you be sporting one of those after they embarrassed Concafer? <laughs> yeah, Kay, you know, I know you said that basically Concafa FC were pretty much representing us at ESPN, but you know what? I'm not having that. I am country over company for this one because <laughs> everybody came in and were trash talking the reggae rovers. JJ Watt was saying, well, because they didn't know who they were. Look, we don't watch NFL that much in Jamaica, but they were going to send them back home on a plane. And listen, Shaka, as my fellow West Indian, will back me up on this one. Sometimes people get a taste of our islands and realize that they cannot handle the heat or the spice and I think certain people Pat McAfee learned that the hard way today so you know what reggae rovers look all jokes aside this is a pretty solid team from Jamaica if you just look at the roster they have quite a number of former reggae boys and I mean reggae boys that kind of only hung up their boots maybe in the last year or so they have like a Wayne Gordon O'Neill Fisher who played with LA Galaxy and a lot of time in MLS so they are a solid team so you're gonna have to think twice before you try to send my boys home Yes. You I can. agree, Alexis. <laughs> Everybody thinks we're all rum punch and beaches, but no, we're still the stuff like that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what, what else have you been up to while you've been there, Alexis? 
Well, apart from trying to cool down some of the fans that we saw earlier today, because I don't know if you saw how Sergio Aguero got in a bit of a spat with someone from Sayward FC. That match was very, very spicy. But I've been hanging out with the Villarreal crowd because they have just brought some amazing vibes as well. And by vibes, I mean they brought Sangria all the way from Spain. And they have a booth for that too. But it was good hanging out with them. They had the likes of Marco Senna playing for them. Absolute legend as well. Got to talk to him about the Euros. And also got to catch up with Giuseppe Rossi. What a journeyman. We know that he's played all over you know, City as well, signed from Manchester United under Sir Alex Ferguson too. Also has love for US men's national team, but of course he loves his Italia. That is who he played for. So we got to catch up on him, but it's not what he told me about Italy that I thought was quite interesting. Is what he had to say about the USA's Christian Pulisic in his season in City A. Christian, um, you know, he moved on from being a role player to a superstar, right? Uh, so can he sustain that? That's, that's what I want to see from him. Um, he has the right mentality. He has the right approach to the game. He's on the pitch, and I think that's when you start making different uh, noise in the soccer world. What do you make of what he had to say there, Jules? I've got a lot of time for Giuseppe Rossi, but he went a bit far on this superstar for Pulisic. It's a really good first season in, in, in Italy, maybe the best season in his career. The kind of season and level that we expected him to produce a long time ago. There was no injuries, there were goals, there were assists. You could see him even on the right-hand side where he himself thought that he could only play on the left-hand side. But we need to see that next season. We need to see that in Europe, for example, because Milan had a bad Champions League campaign, not a much greater Europa League campaign either. The defeat against Roma. So, great first season, for sure. Superstar, not yet. But he's on his way, and if he continues like that, why not one day? But for now, let's just not get too carried away, please. OK, but he's definitely been important, Frank, for Milan this year. Do you think it's been easier for him, the fact that he is away from the English media spotlight and being able to do his thing over in Italy more freely? Maybe, but uh, I think it's... Uh, I mean, I want to congratulate him because it's never easy when you change uh, from a country to another country to adapt and to be so efficient. And uh, yes, Italy is not England. It's not the same championship. Uh, he, he used to be the top of the top, but he's not anymore. But it's still a difficult championship. And to adapt and to be so efficient like, like he's been this season is a, it's a, it's a good, very good point for him. And uh, um, he's getting better. I saw him playing sometimes, you know, uh, uh, comparing to what I see with Chelsea. It's, it's much more accurate than he used to be. So he, I think he, he, he reached another level. But I'm with Jules, you know, to consider as a, as a superstar. Yeah, we'll have to wait a little bit. But he's in a very good way to accomplish, I think, uh, what he wants to go and where he wants to go. And uh, yeah, let's see how it works next season. Uh, let's see how Milan uh, works next season. But um, it's very encouraging what we see from him. Uh, back to you, Alexis, though. So we've just heard from you, obviously. You've been having fun out there. You've been drinking the sangria with the Villarreal fans, catching up with Giuseppe Rossi. What else have you got planned? What's ahead? Well, tomorrow, honestly, we're trying to uh, track down to get some time to speak to the one, the only nanny of Manchester United fame. But he's harder to track down him and Kun than, than Shaka at carnival time. But we may be pulling some <laughs> strings and we may be getting him tomorrow. But a couple of days from now, too, because, you know, I can't just work one tournament, can I, Kay? I have to work two. So after this, I go, actually, not even after this, in the middle of this Saturday, I head over to DC, which I'm quite excited about because all this talk about Christian Pulisic and whether or not he's the man giving main character energy uh, for the USA as he has been for Milan. Well, he'll be in action this weekend because the US men's national team play Colombia in DC. That's one of the two warm-ups that they have before Copa America, where I'll be following them all summer long for us on ESPN FC. So excited for that one because, you know, we love a little North America meet South America. Could see some feisty football going on there. That was a great analogy from Alexis I, I, I don't know what she's talking about. I do. Okay. <laughs> I do. No idea where that came from. Shaka knows. 